Dave from the Redneck Garage. Well, if you're a regular subscriber of my channel, thanks for being a subscriber, by the way. You know that I have a locksmith business. I run a locksmith company here in Franklin, Tennessee. And I also have the Redneck Garage, which is a YouTube channel and Jeeps and all that kind of stuff. And rarely do those two things intersect, but occasionally they do. Mark is a guy I've been doing work for for years. He owns a printing marketing company. Just, I mean, his family, his whole family is awesome. Uh, and he has a son that's a Jeep freak. But not only is it a Jeep freak, he likes to do stuff himself. He likes to do upgrades. So whenever I get an opportunity to step in and say, hey, I can help with something, you know, if you ever need help, I love doing that when I can help a young person. Because as society goes along, there's fewer and fewer people that will actually get out and turn a wrench and get their hands dirty. And those are the people that I connect with, right? So Cole's going to come over here, his son, who's in college, who does it himself, and we're going to take a look at his headlights. Mark said he was driving home from college and his lights went completely out. What the heck? He's looked at it, he's gotten frustrated, and I said, well, bring it over, we'll take a look at it. So he'll be over here in a few minutes. First thing I wanted to talk about is tools. If you're going to look at anything electrical, headlights going out, things like that, electrical tools are your best friend, right? And I don't mean like some cheap $1.99 thing from Walmart. While you can get some results from those, a test light and everything, I wanted to show you a tool. It's kind of expensive. I'm going to put a link down below in the description, but it is the most handy, most uh, amazing tool I've ever used as far as like doing electrical work. So let's take a look at that real quick. This, my friends, is called the Power Probe 4. There was a Power Probe 1, 2, and 3, and now they've come out with the 4. I've got a 3, and, and this one I just got maybe uh, a couple months ago. Now these things have a lead that goes all the way up to the battery. You can see that's where it's a little bit different. It'll go usually between the front and the back of the truck. A power probe will do so many amazing things that you probably won't ever use. You can do, you can check circuit boards with it. Um, one of the things is you can apply a ground and a positive charge to whatever you're doing. It has interchangeable probes that you can switch out. It's got the ones you can clip onto the wire rather than probe it like this. So they're super, super handy. It's got an LED screen and it actually has an LED flashlight on the front. These are the most amazing things. It not only does it function as a test light, it's an ohm meter. Uh, it can do resistance values. I mean, these things are amazing. So we're going to be using this on Cole's Jeep, and you might get a little bit better idea of why I love this thing. Um, but as far as like durability, everything else, the power probe is the cat's meow. It's the pajamas to wear. I don't know, whatever saying you want to use. These things are awesome. So we're going to be using this on his Jeep to try to figure out why he has issues with his headlights. Anytime you're doing work on a Nissan or a garbage disposal, it really doesn't matter. In your head, you're doing a flow chart of, okay, if this A plus B equals C, where are we going to start? We're going to start at A. Sometimes we make the mistake going jumping in to in the middle of something when it was something simple like there's a problem with the connection on the battery. There's a ground that's an issue. That it's really something simple that you should have looked at at the beginning rather than spending four or five hours trying to diagnose something that had nothing to do with the problem. So there's your advice before we get started, before Cole gets here, just remember always start at the beginning in your flow charting in your head of the simplest things before you jump into maybe it's the computer ECM secondary module thing right that. You know what I'm saying? Right. You got it. All right. So Cole will be here in a minute. We're going to introduce him and then we're going to jump into his JK, which I hear is just a uh, piece of work. So awesome. Cole's here. Say, hey, what's up, buddy? Hey, what's up? Look at his Jeep. Man, that is a bad looking Jeep. Thank you. I love it. We were talking about you before, so when you watch the video, you go, oh, it wasn't too bad. We, your dad's a pretty nice guy, I guess. All right, so we're going to take a look at his headlights because he can't drive at night, can't go pick up a good looking girl. I don't know what's going on. This one isn't a four door, so we're not going to give him too hard of a time. It's a real Jeep. Not like a, J, not like a TJ, but you know, whatever. Yeah. Love it. All right, so anyway, he's got problems with his uh, lighting, and we're going to take a look at why he can't see what's going on. We're going to use the Power Pro 4 to, to look at that and see what's up with that. Oh, Lord, we got the spider's nest. <laughs> he's got all kinds of lights on this thing. All right, so what he said was when he was driving that both lights went out. So that typically means that it's not one of the igniter boxes for these HIDs right here. Um, because one of them could go out, but not usually both. So we're going to start doing some testing on these wires to see what we got going on. Uh, could be a ground, could be a lot of different issues. So let's take a look. Like I was saying before, here's the LED screen on the Power Probe 4. You've got, it'll actually apply power. It'll apply um, positive and negative. We got 12.76 volts. Isn't that cool? Wow. If I apply power with my Power Probe, boy, that's annoying. 
you can see that the light does come on. So we got an issue with power coming into the boxes, which means it's somewhere in the factory wiring, more than likely, or a fuse, or somewhere in this conglomeration of wires. But that's good. We know that the lights actually work. So we could just put a switch up on its dashboard and run the wires up through the door here and just really go redneck with it. What do you think? Maybe not. Okay. We'll do it a, we'll do it a different way. Okay, so we found the culprit. If you look here, you can see that it got hot on the ends there. And this smells stinky. This is a ballast load resistor that comes with it. And if you look closely, you can see that it's melted right there on the ballast. And there's discoloration all on the little circuit board. So I got on Amazon Prime, and believe it or not, for $11.95. You can see the... Okay, now I'm jumping around. But you can see where the water got on the circuit board here. And that's what toasted it. So we'll try to do something about waterproofing it uh, when we get the new one in. But that's super cool. We figured out where, where it is, what's wrong with it. Something pretty minor. The ballast resistor's gone out. Once we get the new one in, we'll throw it in there. We'll start buttoning this part back up because we really don't need to mess with the rest of it. Okay, so clearly, if you have any sense at all, you can see that power probe are a really good tester tool. Makes your life easier. And we basically started at the beginning, started tracing the wires out. Um, this was really invaluable by being able to click the button. I could make the lights come on. Uh, and then we just kind of traced it back from there. It's kind of tied up in there as far as like where the bulbs are um, But once we got that thing and I started pulling it, it just came apart and you could smell the burnt electrical smell And that's pretty much that's a good uh, tip for you. if you smell burnt electrical. It's probably a bad thing That's not good. It's bad. So we're gonna button it up I was really excited to meet a young gearhead that uh, you know what they're getting to be less and fewer and fewer uh, so, you know, it's just exciting to be able to spend some time with them, talk some wrenches, and figure out what's wrong with his Jeep. We'll do another video when we get him in. We'll try it, and then we'll take a little bit better walk around, and he can tell us what he's done to his Jeep, because I'm really impressed with everything he's done. It's awesome. I'm David from the Redneck Garage. Key! Turn the wrenches.